the all electric, the very first all electric non compliance Mercedes Benz went into production today. And, you know, I have to say that I have kind of high hopes for this car. It kind of snuck up on me and I think a lot of people. Um, but I think it's going to be a pretty big competitor to Tesla and Audi and, and, and a few other SUVs that are already on the market. I'll tell you all about it coming up next. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of unbiased electric car news. If this is your first time here, go ahead and click on that subscribe button down there so you don't miss anything moving forward. All right, as you guys remember, I actually reported on this car a few times, including um, a ride along that I had in uh, Vegas during the CES. Uh, this is me riding along in the uh, uh, prototype. No, that was actually a production car. Um, and uh, this uh, this is the video from their um, unveiling, uh, their launch event in uh, in Europe. I couldn't go. That one was in Sweden, I believe, and I couldn't really go there. <coughs> Sorry. Um, I, I, I just, 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 just couldn't make it, but I, I really enjoyed seeing it in Vegas and riding it. And I have to say, I was more impressed than I thought I would. Um, I, I really just wasn't that excited until I actually got into it. Um, looks like a Mercedes Benz, a very slick one inside and out. Um, and I, I love the way it rides. Um, definitely was probably one of the quietest, um, electric cars that I've, I've ever been in. Uh, and, and that's how they design it. I asked them, like, well, what's one of the best features that you guys have? And, and they, 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 they pointed to the fact that it was uh, pretty, um, pretty quiet. And I have to say that, that that was definitely true when I was riding in it. Um, as you can see, they closed down some streets in Vegas to let us uh, uh, ride in these. And I do like the way it looks, I have to say. But let's talk about the, the beef here, right? The production um, started this week. As you can see, this is the first one rolling uh, off of the production uh, uh, line. And by the way, they have a picture of the entire team with it. Um, I had it somewhere. <clears throat> Maybe I don't. But uh, kudos to everybody who worked on this car. I know it's not easy to work on an electric car in a legacy manufacturer uh, like a Mercedes. So kudos to them. Uh, by the way, this is the inside of the car, just like I said. A pretty Mercedes-C, if you, if you ask me, which is a good thing. Um, I mean, yeah, of course, I would prefer... Um, a, a bigger screen. I love my Tesla, uh, a, a big screen. And this is something that I think they could have done a better job on. I'm not that crazy about the wheel, just like I am not crazy about the Jaguar I-Pace wheel. But overall, this is a pretty good car. The fact that they're going in production is a big deal because the first delivery start next month, though they're not going to deliver too many. I think it's going to be more like kind of a um, official it's it's out there car kind of a thing but it i believe it's only in the november november of this year when they're going to start really ramping up the production uh, of this car the um just just a reminder so this is and by the way they just released a, a, a kind of odd video with a bunch of people talking over it and um they, they they're basically essentially saying how this is the future of mercedes it's a new era but yet they're still making them on the same conveyor line uh, on the same production line as a couple of other gas cars that they have and i get it i get it this is just the way legacy manufacturers have to you know start switching to the all electric cars you know, they, they, there's a lot of money they've already piled into this and, and obviously building a separate production lines and facilities takes even more money. So this is how they're doing it, which is fine, which is which is fine for now. I think that's um, that's perfectly OK. Uh, now, the uh, the specs, just to remind you guys, um, now there is no the, the thing about their mileage right now is a little weird, but I'm going to I'm going to assume that they're going to come up with about 200 mile in EPA, which was kind of low originally because they were promising 250 260 right uh but not anymore as you know the audi e-tron is also got had a, got an epa rating i believe on 204 207 something very low so it you know the the, the eqc doesn't look that bad with that now i have to say my model s 60 kilowatt hour right now after all the you know battery kind of a uh, um degraded a little bit and i think i have um 180 190 mile range epa which is perfectly fine. Like I've never had problems uh, running out of, uh, uh, you know, energy. And now uh, that, you know, once uh, Mercedes here in the United States, by the time EQC is in the United States, there will be over 500 uh, fast charging networks uh, by Electrify America. Um, the EQC can charge at about at, at tops at 110 kilowatts, which is decent. 
That's what Teslas are doing, Model S and Model X are doing right now. And by the way, so they also haven't announced the pricing, but it looks like just converting from what they are going to be selling them in Europe um, before their taxation. It's about 67,000 American dollars. Now I know they're import taxes and stuff like that. So I'm gonna assume their pricing is gonna be maybe like 69,000 uh, dollars. And obviously they have a full, um, the full uh, tax credit still available to them. By the way, in the beginning of the show, I said this is the very first uh, non-compliance car because obviously we know that the B class uh, was uh, built on um, uh, with help of Tesla. Actually, as you remember, Daimler, the parent company of Mercedes-Benz, uh, they uh, were one of the investors. As a matter of fact, they were credited for saving uh, uh, Tesla from going uh, uh, belly up. So kudos to them. But uh, B class didn't really work out. It did look like it was a compliance car. This is a really the first real uh, all-electric car. Uh, now, let's talk about some issues that they might face. Uh, before that, of course, I want to remind you that this video and this channel is sponsored by Byton. Uh, check out their all-new M-Byte coming to the US and Europe at the end of next year, over 300 mile range, uh, starting at $45,000 before the incentives and over 50,000 reservations made around the world. You should really have yours by now because there's absolutely zero dollars it takes to make one in about 60 seconds. So go to Byton.com or uh, the link in the description of this video. Okay, so uh, now, as you guys know, I'm an e-tron reservation holder, um, Audi e-tron, and um, these two will be back to uh, kind of a, um, side by side. They will be definitely competitors. Um, I know I've kind of cooled off on getting, I was really excited when they launched, but then as I test drove it and and just kind of see, you know, kind of uh, observe what Audi is doing with uh, with with how they're rolling this out. I have to say, I'm 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 keeping my reservation, but I'm I'm no longer eager to be one of the first ones uh, driving it. I'm still considering maybe getting maybe a used Tesla once my um, current one expires in a couple of weeks. Uh, but I gotta tell you, EQC, I am thinking about it now too. Uh, and I know that I even, I even, I'm even thinking about the Jaguar I-Pace. I am really that now back into this open market where, you know, now I've owned Mercedes's before and I have to say they're not the best cars on the market in terms of just generally for me, their tech is usually lagging, but um, they do the, every time they got me with their customer service. There's one thing that I absolutely require from a car when you spend this much money is customer service and Mercedes has been nothing but absolutely amazing to me. Now I know in maybe different areas and different years and stuff like that, it goes up and down. But to me, this was a big deal. Obviously, the build quality, obviously, the availability of parts and, and a good lease deals and stuff like that. All of that I will expect from this car. Let's see if they get rated with over over 200 EPA miles, because I think that's kind of important to be in 200s. Uh, but I wouldn't expect anything more. I do like the way it looks. I you know let me know in the comment section if you guys do as well. Um, but it real now that it's in production and it looks like it's going to be here very soon. They're definitely yet another exciting all electric car on the market competing with Tesla and Audi and Porsche that's coming up with their own uh, Taycan at the end of the year. Um, and uh, you know, even people who are maybe were thinking about getting Kia uh, Niro EV, even though that's not a luxury car, but you know, if you really do want to have an SUV, you know, and if you have some extra money, this this could be a pretty attractive um, option. I'm now considering it myself. I'm, I I haven't even thought about it, but yeah. Uh, don't forget to get on our VIP list, by the way, at uh, eforelectric.com slash VIP. And of course, if you want to watch me live and support me on Patreon, there's a link in the description of this video for that as well. All right. What do you guys think about EQC? Would you be on the market for that? Let me know in the comment section. Other than that, see you next time. And remember to stay charged.